Hey everyone, welcome back to How to Tableau. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to make rounded bar charts. If you are getting tired of creating those standard bar charts, we're gonna show you how to just make rounded ends on them. Uh, it's gonna be a fun one, so let's just hop in. So here we are, we're in Superstore, and what we're trying to do is, uh, you already know you've built a lot of bar charts you're tired of building them you're trying to spice them up just a little bit not a ton but something to, it's a little bit different why not make like rounded bars and uh, and we're gonna build this chart in this how to tableau uh, what you'll notice a couple features is first we've got rounded bars they're going uh, from the start to the end all rounded and then there's this gray background on all of those. And then we've also got our values on the left side here. The reason we don't have them on the end of the bars, and I like to put them on the sort of where the start of the bar is, is because it's easier to compare those values. If you actually want to look at the numeric values and compare them, uh, they're just right there. And uh, of course, you've got the bars as a visual indicator. But when you actually want to compare two values, uh, you can compare uh, whatever digit whether it's the thousands or the tens or the ones, you can compare those values pretty easy with any two numbers. So how do we build this in Tableau? Well, it only takes three calculations and we're gonna build out all three. Uh, but first let's just take, um, let's go find category. I'm just gonna double click and bring that on my view. And let's make that uh, uh, in, fit the entire view. And then of course, uh, we'll add subcategory as well. Uh, once again, double clicking. And the, now we're going to build these rounded bars. And the trick to a rounded bar in this case is hopefully you have another dimension in your data. And that's going to be really important. And then that dimension has at least four members. What do I mean by four members? You know, it's got four different values inside that dimension. For instance, in our data set, if I, uh, the Superstore data set, if I look at region and I right click, I'm gonna go to describe, and you'll notice that if I scroll down here, it lists out the four members, central, east, south, and west. And those are the members that I'm talking about here that we're going to use to sort of drive uh, and sort of cheat building this rounded bar chart. And we're gonna use each of those four members to build out these four dots back on this chart. The first dot being the, the beginning of the color bar and the end of the color bar. And then the third dot's gonna be the beginning of the gray bar and the fourth is gonna be the end of the gray bar. So four members are gonna sort of cheat to build this view. So we're gonna start by creating a calculation. Uh, we're gonna start by building these bars and I'm just gonna call bars and we're gonna use the case statement. And we're gonna say case of the region when it's south. Uh, let's then return a zero. It's gonna be our first value starting the first of the colored bars. And then when it's east, then we're gonna do a level of detail calculation. We're gonna say it's fixed. And because uh, we're focused on subcategory on our view here, right? That's our object of um, that, that we're aggregating on. We're gonna say sum of sales. So we're gonna get the sum of sales by subcategory. That's the aggregation of our bar that we had on our original bar chart. So if you come back here and look at it, it's just sum of sales by category. And then uh, we're gonna, then build that gray bar and we're gonna say when um, west, then let's go zero and when central, uh, we're gonna use another level of detail calculation. We wanna, if you take a look at this bar, we've got gray bars showing and aligned with the max value, which is phones here in my data set. So we'll just say, um, fixed actually we don't even we're not even going to use fixed we're just going to type out max and we're going to have sort of this blank lod and this blank lod is going to return the maximum value of whatever we insert in that and what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this fixed 
level of detail calculation. Don't forget to copy both curly braces and we'll bring that in and paste that inside the max statement. So we have a level of detail within a level of detail calculation and then we can hit end. By the way, there are a bunch of different ways to do this. Uh, I've already created this calculation once, so I'm just gonna add a space in the title. You'll see it's a valid calculation. Back, uh, by the way, again, created this, uh, you could do this calculation with table calculations. I'm just choosing to use level of detail uh, this go around. So I'm just gonna hit okay. I'm gonna go back to our new sheet and I'll search for bars. You'll notice I've done this a few times. I'll take this last one because that's what we did. Uh, and I'll drag it out onto my view. And when I do that, uh, I'll see these bars with numbers that are way too high. You want to not use an aggregation here. You want to use a dimension. So you've got your dimension now on your view. And you don't want to use automatic. You want to specify the line. A line's going to build what you want. Again, not looking great. I'm going to change the path. Um, I'm going to change the size here to be as big as possible. I'm not too worried at this point uh, because I can just take region and I'm just drag it on path and that solves my problem uh, thus far. But I've got some bars that are being built. I've got two sets of bars and you can kind of see where they are. If I just hover my mouse, uh, it's sort of giving me a, a few different points in the middle of my bar. And those are what will eventually be uh, it's going to be the end of the, the first bar, the colored bar. So let's create the colored bar calculation. I'm just going to create a new calculated field. And I'm just going to say if uh, my region and my two regions I'm going to select here, I'm going to say if south was for the first bar uh, or region is equal to east, then let's return the category. Uh, else uh, we'll say it's the background because if it's in the other regions it's the background color and and so I'm just gonna again call this color and when I do this uh, I can then go search for color and I'll just drop color onto color and background is the top value and I can just click and drag that value to the back and you'll see We've got the colors we're starting to look for. I can just change this background color to be like this gray. Hit OK. And now we've got some bars built out. Uh, if you wanted to sort these, so let's sort these. We're going to sort subcategory within category. I can just right click and go to sort. And I can just, because, uh, the, way that, because the way I'm doing this, I can just use a field. And I can just select sales like I don't need sales on my view uh, I can just select it the normal way and I'll sort those bars uh, in a very standard practice It's nothing any different than what we're doing the last piece is the labels and to do the labels I want to revisit our bar calculation I'm actually just going to copy this um, and duplicate it because we're going to cheat and use this for our labels that we're going to put over here on the left or on the start of the bars. What I'll do is I'll edit this value and um, what I want to do is instead of using the value at the end here, uh, I just want to say uh, I can actually just delete out these other two values uh, right away. But what I want to do is put basically my label of my value on self. So if I just cut south out of here and paste it in on the the second line here where we had our value and then just get rid of this value as well so we just have case for region when it's south or we could have used an if statement doesn't matter um, and then we'll just call this labels and I'll hit okay and now we'll just go search for labels and bring this out onto label and of course no labels showed up that's because we're not allowing them to overlap, but as soon as we allow them to overlap, we've got values. These values are incorrect, by the way. You're not gonna wanna use a sum. Once again, you're gonna wanna use dimension. Dimension breaks the view, actually. So you're gonna really use uh, an attribute on this view. And if you wanted to format your labels, you could just change your default properties to um, uh, currency. 
and I'm going to get rid of the decimals. And there you have it. Now we'll just make a little bit of space for those labels. I'm going to edit my axis. I'm always going to leave, uh, I'm going to choose fixed here for the time being, but we're always going to leave that open, uh, the, the, the right side here of our, our line chart or a rounded bar chart as uh, automatic. We're going to let Tableau select it for us, but we're going to have a fixed start here. And I'm just going to, uh, just because I've done it before, we're just going to make enough space for those labels. We're going to choose negative 50,000 for that value. And it's going to depend on your chart. It's not always going to be negative 50,000. Really, a lot of different variables are going to kind of apply there. But I've got my labels now showing up. You'll notice uh, it sort of looks like a th thermometer. Some people like this. I'm not a big fan of it. All you have to do is click on color and then choose your marker type on color and it gets rid of those dots. So now we've got uh, more or less, we're starting to hone in on what we want. Maybe I'll just change the bar size to be a little bit smaller. It's nice, but it's a little big for me. Uh, and we've got everything we need here. I think we've got labels, we've got color, we've got the bar length, and now we just could do a little bit of formatting. For me, we've got the labels already, so we don't need the show the header. And if we don't have the header, then we don't need uh, the grid lines. And so I'm just going to get rid of the grid lines here on my view. I'm also going to get rid of my axis rulers and ticks they, and zero lines. They kind of just don't do the trick for me here because we have enough visual indicators uh, within 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 our chart already. And then, uh, yeah, we've still got a vertical divider. So I'm just going to go on dividers and I'm um, going to remove that column divider as well and then but it still needs a little bit of more horizontal here so let's just add the row divider to another level and there you have it that's the rounded bar chart that we were going for we've got the values we've got different colors uh co color indicators on here and we've also got rounded bars three great different pieces of information uh rounded bar chart only took three calculations pretty pretty straightforward actually when it comes down to it and we've just got a couple of level detail calculations. Not too tough. Uh, I think that's going to be it. Let's wrap this up. So that's it for the how to make rounded bar charts. I think the big takeaway from this is you need another dimension in your data. You need something with at least four members in it in order to use level detail calculations to build it. Otherwise, we're going to have to use a different method. And we'll talk about that in a future episode. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like it. And why don't you just subscribe while you're at it? Uh, you'll get an email as soon as, if it's at your preferences, of course, uh, you'll get an email saying, hey, there's a new video. It's coming out once a week, minimum from uh, the Data Coach Tessellation team. And of course, if you have any ideas for videos, please share them in the comments down below or just ask me anything. Happy to respond. Thank you. Have a great day.